Hey y'all, welcome back. So this is part two of our Q&A um, of some of the most asked questions um, that Stan and I receive about having a large family, adoption, finances, and all those things. So we're just gonna dive right into it and get back to all the questions. The reason we chose international adoption is pretty simple, and that's where God led us. Um, you know, when God called us to adopt, we hadn't really discussed international or domestic. Uh, but that's just where he showed us he wanted us to go. So for us, it was very easy. Uh, I can say that once we went overseas and we began to visit several of these orphanages, uh, we have a totally different view now. Um, while we support uh, and we applaud anyone that adopts domestically or internationally, we feel that there's more of a need internationally. Uh, every year in the United States, approximately 80,000 children are adopted. Right now, it's about 4,000 internationally. Yeah, and I, and I know a lot of people, it goes along the same question that was just asked. Why don't you adopt American kids instead of, mm -hmm. you know, foreigners? Um, and at the end of the day, it all boils down to, you know, there isn't any more value placed on kids who are in America as opposed to any other country. They were all created in his image. They were all created for a purpose and they're all worthy of a family to love them and protect them and take care of them. So we just want anyone to adopt. It doesn't matter if it's domestically or internationally or um, foster to adopt. Um, every child is worthy of a family to be loved and protected. And so that really is what it boils down to. The answer is no. For us, uh, yeah, God created us with different ethnicities, um, and we'll you know applaud those and we'll celebrate those. But at the end of the day, what's important is that a child has a mother and father and someone to love them. You know, we went through a lot of classes uh, pre-adoption uh, dealing with these subjects, and we kept being told that yes, it will make it harder. I can just tell you this. We've been an interracial family for three years. Uh, it hasn't been harder for us at all. Kids deserve a family. I don't care what family they get. Uh, it's better than them being in an orphanage. Would we love to see uh, orphans stay in their biological families? Absolutely. That should be the top priority. Uh, would we rather kids in the Philippines be adopted by people in the Philippines? Absolutely. But the fact of the matter is, those things are not happening in all those countries right now. So these kids, their, their plight is, they're just laying in beds and orphanages all day. So while you're sitting there arguing over, you know, should uh, this kid be in this family or this kid be in this family because of interracial decisions you're making, these kids are suffering. Um, we are not a family that keeps our feelings on our sleeve. We will teach our children the same. We will teach our children how to be bold and confident in who they are, no matter what rude comments may come their way. And if the comments of you know, hurt one of our children or offend them or make them feel less than, we work through that as it comes. Um, but just because those problems may or may not arise because you've adopted a child of a different race or ethnicity than you, doesn't mean you don't adopt them. Because like Stan said, the only other option is for them to continue to be an orphan and that's just not okay in our book. Uh, the number one answer to this, and it's very simple, but nobody ever wants to listen to it, is do not spend more than you make. It's, it's that simple. Uh, most people are trying to keep up with their neighbors or their friends. If you do that, you're going to be in debt and you're going to have problems. So we just we cut out all the unnecessary things that we don't really um, need, but we just won't. Uh, other thing is have an emergency fund. That way you don't have to use things such as credit cards and go in debt to someone. You live within your means. You don't spend more money than you bring in. Mm -hmm. Put money aside for savings, whether that's $25 a month or $2,500 a month. Uh, just do what you can where you're at and be wise with your money. I think you have to find out what matters to you in life. And for us, what has mattered most, I mean, since before we ever got married, was that I was to be home with the kids. Mm -hmm. um, and so... From the time that we said I do, we 
we, even though I had a job at that point, um, and we knew that I would continue to work until we had our first child, we didn't go out and purchase two vehicles, and we didn't go out and live extravagantly because we had two incomes and no children at the time. We stayed pretty much living off of one income because we knew that in a few years, uh, we didn't want to have to all of a sudden go from having all these materialistic things to now we've got to cut everything out of our life because I choose to stay home. So for us, having one vehicle, maybe doing without a few things here, that which we really don't, we don't go without. Mm -hmm. But to the world's eye view, um, for us, it's worth it all for me to be able to be home with the kids um, and for us to not have any debt hanging over our heads. So um, you really just have to find what's most valuable to you in your life. It's a whole new world, parenting teenagers and the dating scene and all of that. Uh, but being that we already have one married and Emerson is now 16, who she's not dating right now, but uh, we do again set the expectations and instill in them some of our goal, our values at an early age. So at three, four, five, six, and seven years old, we're already talking about dating and what that is to look like and what are we are to expect, what are we expecting of them um, and what to be looking for in a future spouse because that, we have different views on dating and kind of it's, it's a lot different than maybe what the world has. So our views on dating are a little bit different than the world. Um, we absolutely will not allow our children to date before they're 16 years of age. Now they can go to special occasions such as dances and different things uh, if they're asked, uh, but our minimum age for dating is 16 years old. That does not mean that when somebody asks them out or they ask someone else out uh, that they're free to go and do as they please. Uh, our belief is that dating uh, is something totally different than just you know hanging out with your friends. Dating is something you do when you are beginning to look for someone that you want to spend your life with, uh, someone you, you, you want to marry. And a lot of people think that's weird. Uh, I actually think it's weird to be in romantic, uh, romantically involved with someone you have no intention with. So uh, we teach our kids that when they find someone they're interested in, uh, that that person can come here to the house. Uh, they can sit and they can talk. They can get to know each other. Uh, then they can you know, tell us whether they uh, feel that this person is still somebody that holds the principles and, and character of someone that they can see themselves marrying one day. And if they can, we'll let them continue to pursue the relationship uh, at that point. But the fact of the matter is, if they can't sit down and talk and get to know each other and enjoy each other's company, <laughs> they shouldn't be dating. Yeah. I remember talking to a friend of mine um years ago when Addison was coming up on the you know age of dating or whatever and I kind of told her our views and sh her the words out of her mouth were well do you really think you can stop him from doing that as like in dating and I, I was very dumbfounded because to me that just screams that she allows her children to tell her what the expectations are what the rules are in the dating world for their family. So at the end of the day, you are, you as the parents, us as the parents are the ones who set the rules and expectations of what we will expect and what we do not expect. And so it's our job to set whatever boundaries that is that you have for your kids and to really hold, hold fast to those and don't waver from them. Well, it's funny that after four biological kids, even though they're all, you know, came straight from Stan and I, it's funny to see how different they are and how different their personalities are. Uh, and that even comes down to um, the way that we discipline them. Um, different personality, you know, different forms of discipline are going to work um, differently with each kid and, and how they respond to it. Uh, and, and what's going to work for them. So while one kid may 
just be distraught over the fact that they might have to get a spanking from one of us. Uh, the other kid, that may not be a form of discipline that we need to use for them, um, taking away a toy or limiting them from playing outside with their friends, or really just give them the stink eye for mom. <laughs> And that's really all that they need. But each child is different. And I think at the end of the day, you have the same goals and the same expectations for all of your kids. You know, that's to obey mother and dad and and to respect us and to respect the house that they live in and to respect their friends and their siblings. Uh, but sometimes the, the way that you discipline them can look much differently. Uh, she pretty much answered a question that we have got from several different people is, uh, what do you believe about spanking? Well, she just answered it. Uh, we do believe in spanking. And sp spanking is not something you do out of anger, you're mad at your kids. Uh, we actually only spank for uh, what we would say would be direct disobedience. Now, I will say this. Uh, I don't know when the last time we've spanked one of our kids is, because usually if you will spank at an early age, uh, they learn the consequences. And they learn that, hey, mom and dad are not going to put up with me directly disobeying them. So as they begin to get older, you're, you're not going to have to spank them. And then I'll also say this. If you think that you're going to not spank at an early age and then begin spanking later on and then it's going to be effective, uh, that's wishful thinking. As you're raising these young toddlers, I mean toddlers, you have to start instilling all these things within them at such an early age. And I think so many parents kind of really forget that they're raising future adults. They're not raising children, they're raising future adults. And so like Stan said, if you wait too late in life in their childhood and you start spanking, it's gonna backfire on you. If you wait too late in life and decide at 16 years old, oh, we've gotta create all these rules about dating and what we expect and all of those things, well, it's probably gonna backfire on you. So you really have to be intentional on, on how you parent your children. So I've been in law enforcement 26 years this year. Uh, the reason I got into law enforcement is, you know, naturally I'm a protector. Uh, I like to protect people. I do not like to see people hurt. I do not like to see people bullied. So it was a really good fit for me uh, getting into that line of work. You know, a lot of people ask the question of, uh, you know, does Ashley worry about it? And the thing is, I was, I was a law enforcement officer when we met. And so my kids and my wife, that's what they've always known. Yeah, so I'm not much of a worry wart by nature. Um, I don't really worry a whole lot. Like Stan said, from the time that I met him, he was already a cop. So it was just kind of like, that's just who, who Stan was. Um, and so I've never, I've never really stressed over him leaving the house day to day, going to work or anything like that. And I think it's just a decision that you have to choose not to live in fear because I mean, it could really take control of your life and really just, I just, it's just not a way to live, not to live in fear. So I don't worry too often about him being out on the streets. So we have been getting a lot of questions too of what are your political views on X, Y, and Z? Well, first of all, this is not a political channel, so we're not going to go deep into politics here. Uh, I do find it quite odd that some of the first questions we receive from people who have asked us no other questions are, what are your views on X? Uh, to me, it's this. If you're asking me those questions and that's the first questions you, you've asked me, then either one, you're wanting your self-esteem uh, raised uh, or uh, you're looking to be offended. Uh, and listen, we're not here to intentionally offend anybody, but if the first question you ask people is, what is your view on X, Y, or Z politically, I think you're looking to be offended. So we're not going to go into detail on what every view is we have because we'd be here all night. I will tell you this, on a national level, we tend to be libertarian. Uh, on a state and local level, we tend to be conservative. Uh, we have very few liberal views, even though there are a few here and there. Uh, but that's just where we stand. Stan and I typically don't argue a whole lot. We don't have a lot of big fights or anything like that. Um, we never really have. We're kind of some of those people that about every few months, we kind of have a little, you know, 
a big spat or whatever, kind of get everything out in the open and then we're fine. So that's kind of how we do things. Now we yeah. get on each other's nerves. Mainly she says, Mainly, I get on her nerves. Yeah. You tell yeah. me I get on your nerves. She, she really does. You used to not tell me that. Yeah, but I've, I've decided. So you don't love me anymore. Yeah, yeah, I love you, but loving you, part of that is telling you so you can get better. <laughs> so, yes, we do not fight a whole lot, uh, but like I said, we're not perfect, and we can be unkind to each other, mainly him to me, but I'm not going to point fingers or anything. Or, or sometimes it can be something as simple as, you know, we're busy, we're tired, so we're already grumpy. You know, haven't had sex in a while because, you know, you're so busy. And that, that can make people grumpy. And sometimes we'll, we'll get irritable because of that. And uh, and we just have a little sex and we're all better. Yeah, I always like to argue so you can have makeup sex. But then she catches on to that real quick and she's like, no, you just want to argue. It's not real. You're not really mad at but me. But I tell you one way that we are really different in how we argue or how we work through things, is we can have a big blow up. I say blow up. We can have a big argument, and we can hash it all out, whatever that looks like, and then he can just be like, okay, I'm sorry, all right. You want to go out? You want to go do something? And I'm like, no, I'm still angry. Yeah, I get I'm, over things very quickly. He gets things, yeah, he gets over things quickly, and I kind of just, I, I just can't flip a switch like that. I have to have time to, like... Get all my frustration out and sulk over it for, for, for a Make them bit. ugly looks at me and roll her eyes. And... Yeah, so we we do. And then I'm like, hey, we're going to have makeup sex. And she's like, oh, I thought you'd never ask. Which brings us to the next question we pretty much got. They're really wanting to know, do you even get to have sex after six kids? And the answer to that is no. I haven't had sex in years. It's just awful. She needs help. We need an intervention. No, that's not true. No, uh, you know, we we're normal pretty much. And then Izzy came along and just destroyed my sex life. And so it's probably fallen to about once a month now. We're just tired. Except Izzy. Izzy. You can hear Isabel. She got all the energy in the world. Yeah. And here's the deal. And a lot of people, because I struggle, because I struggle with this. I th we talked about this one time, like feeling guilty that we only have sex once a month or, or whatever, because back years ago, that would have never been okay. Oh no, it would have never flown. She'd be like, I need it every day, daddy. No. Oh, gosh. <laughs> No, it would not have flown with him. That's right. I mean, it, it would have never, um, which is fine. But now that our lives are just different, and it's just a different season of life right now, it's not that we're denying each other. It's not that we're growing apart from each other. It's just we're in a different season of life, and we're both to the point in our marriage where we understand that it's okay if we're not. And he here's the thing. And don't misunderstand what she's saying. Yeah. Don't go to your spouse and say, oh my gosh, listen to them and what yeah, they're yeah. saying. Mm -hmm. We're not saying sex is, is not important. Mm -hmm. uh, sex is important. Sex is a, a God-ordained thing and God's blessed us with. And, and you should have sex with your spouse. I don't care how old you get. But the fact of the matter is, we're not in our 20s anymore where, where a lot of males think sex is not only... In the top five, it's got to be the number one thing to a marriage. I mean, eventually you begin to grow older and wiser and realize, listen, sex, sex is important. But there's a lot more things that are more important in our life right now, especially with our girls. We talk very openly about sex with our kids. and That's our sex ed class since we're uh, homeschoolers. Yes, and so sex is a topic of conversation in our household that, you know, is talked about. A lot of parents, it's, they're embarrassed uh, to talk with their kids about it. Let me tell you, if you're embarrassed to talk with your kids about it, your kids will be embarrassed to talk to you about it. But I can tell you who they won't be embarrassed to talk to, their friends. So mom, dad, you know, talk to your kids about sex. 
Uh, it shouldn't mean an embarrassing thing. Uh, it's a God ordained thing. It's a, it's a gift from God. God intended it between a husband and a wife in a marriage. And they need to know that this is normal. Okay, so that is it. I think we have answered the majority of the questions. If you have not subscribed to our channel, then you need to do so right now and click the little bell so you get notifications when we upload our videos. Um, thank y'all for joining us and we will see y'all next time. Bye. Bye.